It's Like Us 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I'm your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of Like Us 101. Every now and then, we like to do a little review of the basics. If you're a student in this classroom, you are pleased. In fact, you know you have succeeded. When a woman calls you a jerk or an a-hole, you're proud. I'm an a-hole. I'm a jerk. I'm proud. Like as 101 students know, there is one and only one reason why we go out on a date. It's to get laid. We don't go out on a date to make new friends or try out new restaurants or see what kind of frou-frou drinks are out there that we can try. We're not out there to hear about uh, people's ex-boyfriends or their bosses or their cat Fluffy. No, no, no. We're there to get laid in the shortest possible time allotted. Spending as little money as we can. That's our goal. Never forget the goal. Stay focused on the prize, boys. That prize is a vagina that's open all night. No doubt about it. Like us 101 students, subscribe to the Three Strikes You're Outlaw. That means any woman who goes out with you more than three times without putting out, dump that bitch. When you get to date number three, if you don't get in, there is no date number four. No exceptions, boys. If you're currently dating somebody and you've been with them more than three times, you haven't gotten any, now is the time to cut them off. Like us 101 students, do not spend more than $40 on a date. Zero is optimum. Zero. Spending more money, buying more lobster or champagne or renting a limo or taking her to an expensive concert or whatever is not going to convince her to have sex with you. She's already decided whether she's having sex with you. Spending more money will not tip the scales in your favor. They will not. It will not. Like as one-on-one students do not date single mothers. They've already made one mistake. The next mistake you'll be paying for. Also, you'll be waiting in line behind those mangy little crumb crunchers. You'll only have sex when she has time. When she can fit you in. When she can get a babysitter. When she's not sick from catching every single disease these kids bring home from school. Forget it. And you don't feel like going on dates to Chuck E. Cheese or McDonald's, okay? I love McDonald's. That's not a date place. Like as one of one students find various ways to get out of paying for dinner. That's the most expensive thing you could be uh, spending money on. Dinner. You know our trick. You call a chick up on the phone and say, what time are you having dinner tonight? And she'll tell you what time she's having dinner. You know, 7, 7.30. Great. Why don't we hook up for a drink after you're done? We also know ways to uh, keep the expenses low at dinner. Like as one-on-one students can eat a hearty meal before they go out to, to eat dinner. Then when you get there with a the chick, just say you'll have a salad because you're watching your weight. She'll never eat more than you if you do that. If she eats more than you do, you're with the wrong chick anyway. Like as one-on-one students do not tolerate cell phones being answered in the middle of dates, whether that's in or out of the bathroom. When you pay for dinner, when you pay for drinks, you're paying for the 100% exclusive attention of the other person. The minute they pick up that telephone, it's time to leave and leave them with the bill. No doubt about it. Like as 101 students know not to ever accept an invitation to go see a band or a comedian where we've been left on the guest list. Because that comedian or that musician is someone she either has effed or will eff, and she's using you as a beard. She wants that person to know that she's in demand. I've told you the story of the woman who took me out to see comedians one night and said we'd be on the guest list. This happened 15 years ago. I never did it again. So there we were on the guest list. We arrived, we sat down, and then... Uh, sure enough, in the back of the room, there was the comedian who put her on the guest list, and she left me sitting at this table... While she went to the back and spent the entire night talking to this comedian. I sat there watching comedians alone. The end of the evening, she came up to me and she said, uh, You know what? You don't have to wait for me. I don't need a ride home. I got a ride home. And there I was, sitting at the table by myself. 
I was brought along just to make her look popular, make her look like she was in demand. I never did that again. Never, ever. Like as one of one students, do not. Are you hearing me? We do not. Do not. Are you listening? I don't think you're paying attention. Like as one of one students, do not stay over, do not hug, do not kiss, do not caress. We do not stay and spoon. We go to her apartment rather than our own. We don't want her to know where we live. If we can get away with having sex without giving her our first or last name, we do it. We get in, we have sex, we towel off, we get the hell out of there. No waiting till the next morning to hear her ask us to take her to brunch or to meet her parents. Forget it. We don't want to meet her parents. We don't want to meet her friends. We don't want to go to her office. We don't want to be with her on the following holidays. Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, February the 14th especially. And any day that might be the anniversary of any day you started dating. Okay, you had sex first on, I don't know, January 4th. February 4th, you're out of town. March 4th, you're uh, busy. April 4th, you know what I'm talking about? Ever see me with these chicks? You know, it's been one month. We've been together one month. Don't let that happen. Then you're getting sucked in. So you see, the idea of Lycus 101 is to get as much sex as you can get from as many broads as you can con with as little time or money expended as possible without having to listen to her blabbing and blabbing and blabbing and blabbing about stuff you don't give a crap about. So, if you would like to learn how to avoid commitment, avoid serious relationships, avoid marriage, to get to the shortest distance between two points, get right between the sheets with her without any time wasted. Or if you disagree with your professor in any way, now is the time to join this classroom discussion. What I've learned from you is I can tell when and how women lie. How do they lie? Anytime they open their mouth. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show, Like 101. I am your professor. Uh, let's say hello to Lynn on the Tom Likas show. Tom? Lynn. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I've never gotten you on the air before. All right. Um, buy a radio. Huh? You should buy a radio. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, my question for you today is, uh, what's your take on living with someone that you're in a relationship with? with? Um, what's the purpose? Uh, well, we both live with our parents, and we both had roommates before. We don't want roommates. Yeah, but that you're going to so, be roommates. Y well, yeah, in a relationship. Yeah, why not have roommates? Because roommates suck. We both had bad experiences. You know what sucks more? Being too young to have a boyfriend, then having to live on top of him all the time? Having him living on top of you all the time? Knowing who you're talking to on the phone? Reading your email? Seeing everything that happens in your life. But what if there's no problem with that? Lynn, you're 21. You're too young to have a boyfriend. <laughs> you're asking my opinion. I mean, you're going to do whatever you want. I can't stop you. Yeah. But do you want my opinion? Yeah. Not good. Yeah. Not a good idea. It's never a good idea. Not till you're at least 25 and uh, until you've attained your dream, whatever that is. Unless you've okay. given up on life. Not at all. Well, what is your uh, career plan? Uh, well, right now I'm going to college, so... So you haven't even finished college yet? No. Uh, <laughs> I, I've got a ways to go. I work full-time. You do not need a boyfriend. You need to study. <laughs> and a booty call, maybe, but that's about it. Or a couple of them. Fine. Bring them, yeah, bring them on. But but having a boyfriend living with you while you're going to college, bad move. But I, I mean, well, all right. I don't get out much, so. Oh, dear. It wouldn't matter. Right, so, in other words, you would have a boyfriend because you're too lazy to go out and meet other people. I just don't have time. And, well, I'm not interested. Right. That, I, that I, really sounds like true love. You're with a guy because no, you don't I'm have time to go out and meet another guy. For other people. 
I, I, well, I dare him. I am not interested in looking for other well, people. Dare right you? Now. You? But oh, then uh, they, you know, why are you calling and asking? You want my stamp of approval? You're not getting it. No, not even. I just wanted to know. It's a bad idea basically. because you need you ha you do not have your degree. You have not started your career. You have not done anything in your life yet. True. True. That's I've why. Had plenty of fun. You know, the the life expectancy in this country has gone up for women over 80 years old now. There is no rush to be in a serious relationship or to have children or to get married or anything else. What is the big rush? I don't know. <laughs> That's my point. But you know what? Back when people, the, the, when people died at 42, yeah, maybe, maybe this would make me. sense, okay? Because you'd be halfway through your life already. Yeah, I'd probably be married with four kids by now. That's I? my point. But you're 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 like a quarter of the way there. Yeah, really. You're not ready for a serious relationship now. So, I'm stuck with my parents then. Or a roommate. I'm terrified of getting a roommate. Don't you have any friends who need a roommate? No, not at all. Most of my friends are actually married or something yeah well so they, they made like, just because they made mistakes doesn't mean you do yeah well they don't make it look like a mistake at all but, but how old are they now 21 uh, like you well yeah one's 22 right. specifically one you won't know it's a mistake until they're 28 or 30 then you'll know it's a mistake look at the numbers dear don't take my word for it yeah look at the statistics what happens to people who have relationships serious relationships at your age 50% divorce rate. Oh, more than that. It's 50% average among all age groups. The younger you hook up with somebody, the more likely it is you'll break up. Yeah. And I've always been the one to get bored first. Well, <laughs> I, I, let me guarantee you, if you have to see his smelly socks and those skid marks on your sheets every day, you're going to get bored a lot faster. Oh, uh, yeah. Dear, I you know what? I see. I've seen your future already. I've already done what you're 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 trying to do. And what's that? I moved in with people when I was too young. Moved in with people when the relationship was still new. Moved in with people because it was cheaper than getting uh, my own apartment, or because I didn't want to have a roommate. Might as well have sex every night. <laughs> this way, you have a roommate and you have sex with them every night. But this is not true love, dear. This is just uh, trying well, to do everything the most, the easiest, most convenient way. Yeah. Your, your career comes first. Yeah. It does. Otherwise, why not just drop out of college and start cranking out kids right now? <laughs> it would be fun in practice. Well, it would yeah. actually pop out. <laughs> oh, so you'd like to have kids right now? No. No, the practice. Oh, practice. Yeah, but I'm dear. I'm talking about really having them. Why even bother going to college? Yeah. What's the point? Well, all right. Thanks for your input. Let me ask you a question. What is it you want to become when you finish college, if you ever do? Uh, I'm aiming. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm kind of stuck between a, accounting and law. So. So let's review. You're 21. What year of college are you in? Uh, my second. So you took your time going to college. Yeah, yeah. I've right. had to work full time the whole time. So. Right. And and you're you're already twenty one, old enough to drink, old enough to vote, old enough, and and you still don't know what you want to be when you grow up. Well, I do. I'm. I mean, I work. Accounting or law are remember. two completely different careers. Yes and no. No, no. Yes, they are two completely different careers. Well, the way I'm looking at it, they they correlate. But they don't. You try representing a client in court if you're an accountant. Oh, I don't mean that. Uh, like a legal accountant or something like that. What is a legal accountant? I have no idea. See, you don't even know what you're doing. <laughs> you are too young and immature to have a serious relationship. You don't want to hear this because you think you're a big girl and you want to move out on mommy and daddy. But the bottom line is you aren't ready. I hate agreeing with you. You know that? I know you do, but you, you know I'm right. And that just makes it all the harder. Well. All right. There, you uh, wait until you've got a degree and then you've got a job to have a serious relationship. All right. Have fun in the meantime. 
Booty calls don't take any time at all. No. 30 minutes in and out. <laughs> uh, I like it a little longer than that. but you know. Oh, I make it an hour. The bottom line is, you know how much time it takes to sit with your boyfriend and discuss the fact that he, he leaves the cap off the toothpaste? Or how long it takes to sit and discuss who's going to do the laundry and who's going to do the shopping? Or leaves his towels on the bedroom floor. There, trust me when I tell you, I've been there. I've done it. I know. If you don't have time now, wait until you have to sit there and have ground rules for when he's going to go out with his friends and when you're going to go out with your friends and how late you're going to stay up and who's going to be responsible for lifting heavy objects and who's going to go to the supermarket. Wait till you have to sit and talk about that stuff every day. Wait till you start taking on that tone of voice. Uh, yeah, we got to talk. Wait till you start doing that. How much time is that going to waste? How much hard drive space in your head is that going to take up? You don't know what it's like to live with somebody. You don't know. All right. Yeah. Wait till you decide. Wait until the two of you debate whether you're going to have one email address or two. <laughs> and then you have to dis uh, discuss w the, the one person who doesn't trust the other person. Why do you need to have your own email address? Why can't we just have one email address with one password? And why can't I have your password to your voicemail, too, while you're at it? And what? Wait you start getting into these little conversations every goddamn day. Sounds pretty boring. I'm telling you, you've never lived with anybody before. Wait till that stuff starts. Oh yeah, it all seems romantic now when you're with mommy and daddy. Wait till you wait till you decide or he decides. One of you makes more money than the other. You one of you should pay more rent than the other. Or who should pay for the electricity? Who should pay for the gas? Oh, it's a lot of fun moving in together. No wonder I've been so freaked out. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah, it's just a blast. <laughs> when you decide who's going to buy the furniture. And what would happen if you ever broke up? Who's going to take the furniture? You try breaking up a dinette set sometime. <laughs> I'll take two chairs. You'll take two chairs. And, and we'll split the and table we'll in half. the table. Right. <laughs> Dear, you have no idea. All you think about is humping and pumping every night and then doing your homework. Whose name's going on the lease? But. Whose name's going on the lease? And if oh. you break up, who'll be responsible for the rent? What happens if you break up and you've got eight months to go on the lease? What are you going to do? You haven't even thought about this stuff yet. Ooh. No. <laughs> you go right ahead and move in with them, dear. You'll find out. Yeah, I've done this. Been there. I told the story on the air of the woman who I had to, uh, she would not leave. We had an apartment together, and she would not leave, and I had to turn off the utilities. Oh, God. To get her to leave. So I should have been concentrating on my career at that time, when instead I was so busy trying to, like, rather than buying a copy of a magazine on the newsstand, I decided to get a subscription so I wouldn't have to go out to the newsstand and pick it up all the time. You ever do that with a magazine, you know? One time, you're looking at a copy of, I don't know, Pick a Magazine, Time Magazine, Newsweek, whatever. You say, you know what? It'd be fun to get this every week. But I don't want to spend four bucks at the newsstand every week. So you send in that little coupon, and they start sending you the magazine all the time. And pretty soon, you're drowning in all the copies of Newsweek you've never read. They're just stacked up around you. Turns out you don't even like Newsweek. You just liked it at the dentist's office that one time. But once you are surrounded by it, you can't take it anymore. And the copies keep coming and coming and coming. And you're saying to yourself, you know what? Maybe I'd like to read People once in a while. Maybe I'd like to read TV Guide. But all I get is Newsweek, week in and week out. Uh, this is what you're doing. Okay, I actually did live with my ex briefly. How was that? Oh, God. I forgot about all the bad stuff. Yeah, <laughs> somebody needed to remind you. <laughs> I believe me. I'm no prude. Have sex with as many people as you like. Any combination thereof, two, three, four, five at a time. Do it. You don't need to share a space. 
All right, Tom. And you know what else is going to happen? <laughs> Every once in a while, dear, you'd like to hear from an ex of yours. You'd like to get a phone call or an email, but guess what? Your new boyfriend who's just moved in with you, he doesn't like you talking to people like that. When or your ex comes friends. to town, or, or your guy friends, your, 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 you want to have lunch with one of your guy friends or dinner, how do you think he's going to feel about that? He's going to hate it. And now he's going to know when you're having lunch with your guy friends, or dinner, or drinks, or dancing, or falling asleep on his couch after you've been drinking all night. Now he's going to know. Before you could lie about it or just say, yeah, I crashed early last night. Now he's living with you. Now he knows what you're doing every minute of every day. <laughs> Yeah. Sounds great, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. In the meantime, you're trying to get a college degree, trying to figure out what you want to be when you grow up, and arguing over who left the refrigerator door open. Uh-huh. That's great. Hey, who's going to pay for birth control? <laughs> oh, there's so much you can talk about. Hey, you know, it's 30 bucks a month for the pill. I, what, I should pay the whole thing? No, you should pay. You're the one who wants to get laid. You're the one who won't wear a condom. Yeah, these conversations are a lot of fun. And uh, you, you have a lot to look forward to there. Well, thanks for the heads up. <laughs> yeah, hang on a second, dear. Let me put Katie on. Katie knows a bit about this, too. Uh, Katie, tell Lynn what you know. Hey, uh, this is Katie. I just want to let you know that um, I'm 21, too. I live with my boyfriend. And unless you're ready to be married, just don't do it. It's like the same thing, almost, what I heard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's nice if you're ready to be married. But other than that, you know, we share everything. And, you know, there's questions. And you can't go out when you want to go out. And you have to check in with your daddy. It's just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Right, Katie, what happens when you've got an ex you'd like to talk to on the telephone? What does your boyfriend think about that? <laughs> an ex I'd like to talk to on my telephone? Are there that any? That doesn't happen. How about guy friends? Any guy friends? Not anymore. Not anymore. You'd like to talk to them, wouldn't you? <laughs> I used to have all right. guy friends. How about that email thing? Friends. Does he read your email? <laughs> he put our email on Outlook. so he There gets... we go. Our email. <laughs> Our oh, email, Lynn. This is the future. That's okay. it. Okay. Wow. You can look forward to all this fun and more. Okay. <laughs> I will have to give this some more thought. I highly recommend that. I mean, how long have you been with him? We've been together for about a year and a half. That's not even close to long enough for living with somebody. How long have you been with yours? Uh, four years. Four years. Wow. Yeah. You'll Would you go back, though? Would I? Would you move um, back out? No. Would you change the way you did it. No, but I mean, I just, I just moved in with him a year ago. So after three years, I thought I knew. But um, I just recommend if you're not ready to get married, then don't do it. What are some of the things that you never knew about him, Katie? That now you realize you've come to hate. Um, he's a sl messy slob, and uh -huh. you know, it, I'm basically already the wife because I do everything, cleaning right. the bills and all that. All right. So. I mean, you learn a lot more with, of the person when you move in with them because you're with them every day, yeah. all day. Wait till, all we record, wait till we record your outgoing message on your voicemail. <laughs> you haven't gotten that far. Hi, yet. we're not here right now. <laughs> and all your exes are calling to talk to you and they get that voice. <laughs> now you can't talk to them anymore. Now you just get a lot of hang-ups on the voicemail. <laughs> freedom is gone. Oh, Lynn doesn't need freedom. Are you kidding? Oh, no. she goes. She has no idea what freedom is. She goes right from living with mommy and daddy to moving in with her new daddy. I, I have, have to, to live elsewhere. on your own before you. I move have in to. With someone. I lived with a roommate and a, with my ex, so I lived. How long did you live with that ex, the, Lynn? Oh, way too long. About a year. About a year. And I've been back at my. Wasn't it house great? Uh, no. 
And what makes but you think this is going to... Oh, yeah, what was it, a year ago? <laughs> two. <laughs> Ooh, two years ago. That's a yeah, lifetime ago. Yeah, so let's he... review. You moved out on him, and then within just a few weeks, you met this guy. Started dating him. Yeah. You're a ser you have serial relationships. You just have one after another. You can't just be single. You just can't be unmarried. You just can't be alone. Can't do it. I tried. You can't. I, I did. You need to learn yeah. how to do that. All right, Katie. Good luck. I mean, Lynn, good luck. <laughs> Katie Thanks. forgot her name. <laughs> All right, so uh, Lynn, how, does this sound promising to you? Uh, depends on what kind of promising. Well, I'm telling you. Uh, just remember, skid marks. <laughs> They're coming your way, baby. Tom, 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 Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Tom. I, I remember you said this once. You said I could fart three thousand dollars. Yes. By the way, I have a new contract now. I'm farting five thousand at a time. <laughs> Good for you. The Tom Likey Show. On... Yes, the Tom Likey Show. Like is 101. I'm your professor at 1-800-5800-TOM. Eddie, on the Tom Likey Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? How you doing? I'm doing okay, Eddie. Um, I just had a one quick question. I have a girl... That I met through a friend that I bowl with, and she came comes down and just hangs out. She's kind of stuck on her ex boyfriend, but he broke up with her and lied to her. They were supposed to like take time off, and then like six months later, they'd be able to see someone. And he was seeing her, seeing someone else during that six months. And there's this other guy that she says she's not really into, and he bugs her all the time. And she told me that she doesn't like that. But I don't call her all the time. I call her once and wait for her to call me back. She'll call me like a week later. So I just want to know if it's something to pursue or... Why are you pursuing anybody? I mean, why... I want to get laid. Yeah, I understand that. But the more work you have to put in, the less likely it is you're going to get it. Right. I understand. But it's kind of like I'm busy. You're not busy time. enough. You should be too busy to be calling. Well, I'll call once and leave her a message to take... Yeah, and how, and when, how often do you call? For real? For her, maybe three or four times, like in a week. Too much. Too much. Too much. Sounds like you got nothing else going on. Well, I got two jobs and I go to school. I'm talking about socially. It makes it sound like you got nothing else going on. Oh, well, yeah. And There's you probably things. have nothing else going on, right? Well, I work at a boy now. I, I don't I care what the like reasons that. are. You have nothing else going on. Pretty much, no. Yeah, well, you, I can hear it in your voice. Today's my birthday. Happy birthday. But you understand you're never going to get laid if you're calling a girl four times a week and she knows you got nothing else going on. It's not going to happen. Okay. You need to ice her. Hey, well, I, I did that once to her because we went to the bowling banquet. And she didn't care. So, well, she's all like, call me because I know you want to. Well, I, <laughs> but I, I don't care what she said. No, I didn't call her for like a week. You tell her. She knows where you are. She can give you a call any time. I told her that. I said, I told her that one time, too. I said, anytime you have a problem, even if it's late at night. Forget about any time you have a problem. Pal, you're doing the nice guy routine. You don't want to hear her goddamn problems. Who cares about her problems? Here's your problem. A buildup of sperm. Yeah, that's right. Th who cares about her problems? Well, like, take, for instance, when I um, asked her to go to the ball game, she told me no at first, and then this other guy I was talking about that she doesn't really like, she tells me, found out he was going, and we went all went together. Oh, isn't that great? You don't go on all-together dates. The guy she's not that into, she has dated him, unlike you. Right. Well, this guy's younger than me. I don't, I don't care. Even though she's not that into him, she's dated him. She tells you she's not that into him. Right. But she certainly doesn't prefer you, or she wouldn't have gone with the two of you to the game. Right. And what she's doing is she's pitting you against each other. It's not going to work. Cause I like it doesn't matter. That's what she's doing. And by the way, it did work, because you went for it. Because I... Oh, yeah, kind of, I guess. Why would you go to the game with some other guy who's interested in her? 
I made him pay for parking. I don't care. Ooh, he spent ten bucks. So what? Okay. Stop being a pussy. When you go out with a woman, you are the one and only man present. That's it. If the only way you can get a date is by agreeing to go out with another guy who's also interested in her, don't do it. Don't bother. Ever. You also do not go out with her and her friends. No best friends, no other friends, no male friends, nobody. And if she says no, just don't ever call her? That's it. Done. Why would you, why would you humiliate yourself? You are never going to get laid if she's out either with other guys who want her or with her friends. Ever. Okay. Ever. Do you understand? Have you ever, ever gotten laid by going out with a woman who's there with one, two, three, four of her friends? No. Have you ever gotten laid when you were one of two, three, or four guys who were with a woman and you went out to a ball game, a movie, a concert, or anything else? Absolutely not. No. So why would you ever do it now? I don't know. I just Stop like doing it. Too. What? I like her as a friend, too. Meow. You don't need any friends. You need sex. Yeah, baby. Yeah, but, uh, pal, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're Mr. Austin Powers here, you know, when, uh, when I have this conversation with you. But the reality is you're a big pussy. I understand. I'll be the first one to admit that. Well, That's pal, it, as long as you're a pussy, you're not going to get laid. When's the last time you got laid? Um, what year okay. was that? What year was that? A month ago. A month ago. And who was it? My ex-girlfriend. Your ex, You had to go to your ex-girlfriend, who probably dumped you, right? No, we were together at the time. You, so you were together with your ex-girlfriend, and how'd that relationship end? Horribly. How? Uh, on an eight-car... Uh, eight car drive from her uncle's and uh, aunt's house. Well, well, who decided to end the relationship? Oh, I did because she wrote me this big letter telling me that she was totally in love with me, and I didn't want that, so I broke up with her. Okay, all right. And the bottom line here is that to pout, you're never it, the only way you get laid is one on one. One on one. That's it. But if you're the nice guy, you're not going to get laid either, right? Ever. But what if that girl doesn't like jerks? Because most girls... Then you move on to the next. Okay. By the way, most women like jerks. Most women, yeah. Most women you'd want to have sex with like jerks. Oh, yeah. Most of the women that you want to have sex with want to have sex with jerks. Right. And you know what this one wants to do? She wants to have sex with another jerk and then call her good pal Eddie on the phone to tell him all about it. Yeah. Well, not, she hasn't done that yet. Not yet. Give her time. Wait till she gets back with her boyfriend for a night. He hit me, and then we had sex, and then he slapped me, and then we had sex, and then he called me a bitch and a whore, and then we had sex again. And then... And I knew you'd understand, Eddie. I knew. You're my friend. I finally get out of there at 6 o'clock this morning. All we did was have sex all night, and then he abused me. And I, I wanted to talk to you first. Because you're always there. You're always there for me, Eddie. You know what I went through before? I'm going through it again. And d d d never mind, the sex is spectacular, but then he treats me like crap. And I'm seeing him again tonight. But I want to talk to you first. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom does not tell us men how to think. Tom simply I'm trying, I'm verbalizes... Well, hey, listen, think. bitch, now I'm talking. I told you how to think. Here's how conversation works. You get to talk and I listen, then I talk and you think about something else. The Tom Likas Show.